Got him. Got him. <laughs> That's what happens when you drop right on him. <laughs> well, not as big as I thought he'd be, but, but it's nevertheless a nice little bass here for Roosevelt Lake. <laughs> that was a drop shot bass, folks. <laughs> Just a little guy. You know, I'm running through here throwing some top water first thing in the morning here at the dam just for fun. And uh, I saw it down there in about 29 foot of water. We'll let it go so it can get back down there. But I saw that fish on my graph down there about 29 foot of water. I just dropped my drop shot down there and caught him. He looked a little bigger on the graph than what, what it came out. But, uh, you know, it's a lot of fun. Something we're going to do today at Roosevelt. We're here in the fall and uh, just got here. Yeah, I've been at Lake Mead, but decided we come to Roosevelt Lake. You know, it's that time of year in the fall where the fish start chasing, schooling, chasing, and uh, but they have their lulls, they have their times. And we fished a tournament, Andrew Napoleon, a, you know, my great friend, uh, we fished a tournament here about a week and a half ago. We ended up, I think, 12th place. And uh, we had to do a gamut of a lot of different things. We had to you know, throw sinkos, throw drop shots, throw top water. And I'm thinking that we're gonna to have to do the same thing today. You know, only because, you know, the fish are moving in and out, they're schooling, and uh, you wanna catch some of these fish, you gotta be versatile. And uh, it's fun to catch them on one bait all day long, but it's kinda of tough to do that realistically on these lakes like this with them being pressured and, and uh, the different areas that you go to, you want a different bait for. So we've got a bunch of different baits here on the deck today. We're gonna get out here, see what we can't do for fall for you, catch some of these fish, see what it's gonna take. Right now, I don't see a whole lot of action on top. What's really cool about this time of year, though, I will say, is a lot of people think you gotta get up early, early in the morning to go catch these fish. They have a tendency throughout the day to come up and start surfacing and boiling and chasing shad. And so you can get out here, you know, at seven, eight o'clock in the morning, like we did, and, uh, and just come out here and see what we can't catch. And, and I'll guarantee you, throughout the day, somewhere throughout the day, these fish will see some boiling. I don't know how big they'll be, but we're gonna work around and see what we can't find. Roosevelt Lake's a lot of fun to fish. It's got a lot of stuff to fish between rock, brush, uh, all that good stuff. And we're gonna try to fish it all today and see what we can't do, catch us a nice little limit, hopefully. Got him. That's a good one. <laughs> in that shade. Oh, he feels pretty good. Well, we'll see. You get him on this six pound line, here he comes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, son. Right there is a good one. He's gonna come out. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, that's a good fish, folks. Little drop shot bass. Not Arizona custom bait, purple worm. Look at that fish. That's a nice little fish right there. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. We had to keep moving around. One thing I know these bass like more than anything is shade. Uh oh, I barely got him. No, 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 no. I barely got that fish. Get over here. Ah! Look where I. <laughs> Look at that. Boink. Beautiful, beautiful. Boy, that one's been stocking up. Look at that. That one's been eating the groceries a little bit. <laughs> You're like I am, you like them groceries. <laughs> that is a beautiful, beautiful bass right here, Lake Roosevelt. Man, let's let that one go. He was right by that pillar. <sighs> you know, anytime during the heat of the day, when, it start, when the sun starts coming out, Boy, you can't beat shade, little shade spots anywhere. Of course, right here at the dam, you know, this is a good little area. It's deep, if you like fishing deep water, and I like fishing deep water. You know, a lot of these times these fish are chasing these shad, they're up and down, up and down. But you're usually pretty consistent on bluffy type stuff. So if you can get on the bluffs, something a little steep, you know, um, you can catch them. That was, that was a good fish. I caught him on my little, little Arizona Custom Beats purple worm. You know what's really important too when you're fishing these pillars like this, and I always like fishing them as I'm going through here, to hit both sides. Hit the right side, hit the middle, 
and then hit the left side and get it right alongside the wall. Let it drop right alongside the wall and uh, you'll do really well there. And then I, of course I always like to hit the middle as well. I've hit all three sides of that. I'm going to come over here. I'm just going to kind of let it fall down here, anywhere in the shade. You know, it's hard to beat the drop shot this time of year, any time of year, <laughs> to be honest with you. And from winter through summer through fall, it better be on your deck sometime, you know, unless you're on some kind of a frog bite somewhere, you know, to where you don't need to, to throw it. But a lot of times throughout the day, I know in the last tournament we were in, everybody had a drop shot rod out, it seemed like. Sometimes you got to do that to catch those fish. And then you'll start seeing them move around, and when they start getting active, you pull up the, the uh, reaction baits. It's a lot of fun. But these fish go through lulls. Remember that. Fish go through lulls. You, throughout the day, they'll, they'll be active certain times of the day, and, and then uh, they'll shut down a little bit. It seems like everybody pops a fish or two, and oh man, the fish are eating a little bit better. And then uh, you'll have your lulls. So you got to be ready for those, those lulls. That's where this drop shot comes in handy. Got him. Got him. <laughs> Get up here where the fish are, huh, son? <laughs> oh, so cool, bass. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. <laughs> you know, I decided to make a little bit of a move here up into the uh, tonneau end here. Get on up in here. Get on up in here. That's not a bad little fish, a little bigger fish. That'd be a keeper in the tournament right there. Chunky bass, look at that. Chunky little guy. Came up in here and thought, man, I'll throw that Cinco a little bit. When I'm looking for, for fish a lot of times, I'll go out on points, things like that with the with the drop shot, and if I if I can't seem to get it done out there, and I'm looking for some 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 action, and a lot of times, see, we we came up here, and now we're starting to see some action up in here. We see the birds, we see life. You know, I tell people a lot of times, find the life, and you'll find the fish. If you go into a cut or a or an area where you don't see any life going on at all, it's probably pretty dead in there. You know. What we're throwing is a Cinco, and I've got my little blade on the back of it. And the reason why I have that blade on the back of it is because this time of year when they're schooling, chasing shad, that little blade offers a little bit of flash in this dirtier water. I fish it the same way. The only difference is, is when you pull it a little bit, you know, when you let it fall, you let it fall to the bottom, when you pull it a little bit, that blade will turn and get a little flash going on. A lot of times they'll smack it. Time by golly, he came up and got that. <laughs> he got himself a little swim bait. <laughs> well, we know what's in here now. Sometimes you can lock into a real good one. They're busting all over the place, these little guys. But they're fun to catch. You can catch them on these little swim baits. This is called the Little Dipper, made by Reaction Innovations. It's a, it's a fun bait to throw. And you just, you gotta use a big long rod. You know, I'm using a 710 Taipan, my signature series little swim bait rod that I like to throw. And uh, that way you get a long cast with it. You throw it out there and you just reel it in fast. Just right under the surface. A lot of times they'll just come up and get it. Got him. Got that one, by golly. <laughs> that was a little Cinco bass there. In the trees. Come on, son. <laughs> come on. All right, come on. 
you're done. You're done. You're done. You're done. Man, I'm telling you, it's been tough today. Look, a bird or something got him at one time. Got hurt pretty good there, fella. See ya. You deserve to be set free. Went back to that Cinco, thought I'd just start throwing it in the brush piles a little bit just to see if something was was up there shallow. You know, we've caught a few, few drop shot fish. Can't seem to get the good topwater bite going at all, Harley. It's, uh, it's non-existent right now. And it, it, it won't be long and these fish will really start moving up and feeding good. But boy, today's been, today's been a little tougher than I thought it would be. I was hoping the bite would pick up, but man. Yeah, what I'll do is just take that bait and I'll just, I still have my little spinner on there, a little bleed. Just throw it up there next to a tree and just let it fall. You know, and you just gotta be really slow. It's not that they're not shallow. You'll catch a few shallow, catch a few deep. They're all over the place. And I'm watching my graph like a hawk too, so if I see something down there, I can actually drop down to it with a drop shot or something. Hey folks, for my tip of the week, one thing really important to realize, especially early in the fall, a lot of times we're seeing all those tiny thread fin shad, the little ones, and you're seeing fish bust. And we're catching a few on the Cinco. You can tell I put a little tiny, tiny blade, just something for flash. We want flash a lot of times, especially if it gets windy or they're chasing shad, that flash really makes a difference. But even when you're throwing your spinner baits, let me explain something to you. If the shad aren't very big and you got a lot of little shad, a lot of times you're better off downsizing your blade size. And what I mean by that is this is the regular size, say a regular size 3 8 ounce spinner bait. Look at the difference. This is a 3 8 ounce spinner bait as well, but look how we've downsized the blades, okay? If you downsize the blades a lot of times, you'll catch a lot more fish. And uh, one thing cool about downsizing the blade as well is you're able to get the bait down quicker. So a couple of little things right there will help you a bunch. Just maybe downsize your blades to match those thread fin shad. And I'll tell you what, you'll catch a lot more fish doing that. There it goes, there it goes, there it goes. Got bit again, but he didn't get it. Got it that time. Got him that time. I don't think he's very big, but he's fighting like he wants to be big. <laughs> oh, he's not a bad little fish. He'd be a keeper. There we go. <laughs> Get on in here. It comes a time when you just got to go right video gaming. And uh, boy, <laughs> little guy. A lot of times when I can't find a way and get these fish to bite on reaction and I've got to go drop shot them and it gets tough, I really rely on my electronics. And uh, man, I'll get right over top of the fish, drop it down there on them. I mean, you're, you're right there where they're at. If you've got the right color bait going, a lot of times you can get them. I'll have to, uh, and that's another reason why I like that long drop shot rig this time of year is when I drop straight down on them, this comes down, it gives me a chance to let it fall, pick it back up, boom, they're usually heavy. You just pull up on it right there and you catch them. There it goes, there goes my line. There's the fish down there. See my line fall right in front of the fish. He ran inside the bush. Got him. <laughs> he ran inside the bush and I got him. Little guy. <laughs> oh, he came off. That fish, if you look right here, there's my line coming down. He ran inside the bush. There's my line coming down. He came from outside the bush, ran inside the bush, grabbed it, and that's how I caught him, but that's my line. Let me see if I can back up here, okay? Here he is, my line dropped. I scooted over. You can see my line right here coming into the bush as it fell through, and then here's the fish right here. He swims, that thick line right there, swims in there and grabs it, and I had him. But uh, we lost him right there at the boat. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> a lot of fun. All 
I've gone over a lot of times on, on what to throw on this drop shot, and I'm gonna tell you what I'm using is the Taipan My Signature Series drop shot rod. It's, a, it's an awesome rod. It's, it's made for the braid in mind with that soft tip. And I love that. It's got great backbone, but a good soft tip, okay? When I use braid, I use a 20 pound, it's a Seaguar Smackdown line, okay? You can use 15. You might get a few wind knots in it, but I like 20. 20 all around is great for me. And it's like thread, it really is. But what I'm doing is I'm tying on a six pound fluorocarbon leader, okay? And that leader is not going up into my reel. That leader is, you know, down in this area when I go to cast. Preferably you like that leader here. But when you're drop shotting, a lot of times just dropping down, you can give yourself a little bit longer in case you're breaking off a lot of weights and you gotta retie. I don't wind it into my reel because I don't like it getting caught up in all the line and not getting compromised whatsoever. But you really don't need it that long anyway. By the time, you know, you, this line gets all chewed up, you're retying a new one anyway, a new leader. But that six pound is awesome. Now, if you're in some heavy brush it, stuff like that, you can go to eight, 10. But the smaller diameter line you go with, especially in clear water, the better chances you got of getting bit, plus your worm acts more naturally. Now, the other key to today's success to catch a few of these fish like this is I had to go to a curl tail worm. And the reason why I do that is number one, they're chasing shad. Number two, I like the wiggle of the worm when it's falling down. So if I'm dropping straight down underneath me instead of having the worm, worm do the old swirly swirl, that tail paddles down. And as the tail paddles down, it looks like a little fish or something, and then they grab it. A lot of times I'll hit, I'll hit suspended fish with the curl tail and catch them. So that's one of the reasons I like that curl tail. So, you know, that Arizona Custom Baits is an awesome bait. I've been throwing them for years. They're soft baits. They tear easy. Pick yourself up plenty of baits. And, uh, but they hold on to them really good. You'll catch a lot of fish on these baits and you'll have a lot of fun. Pick up oxblood colors, blue, oxblood, blue vein, of course, if they're eating crawdad. If they're on shad, get the shad patterns. You know, and, and you can't go wrong with morning dawn or a purple or anything like that. I will say this, oxblood, the purple and say a shad type pattern, those three colors are pretty much dominant anywhere you go. You don't, you know, there's a lot of colors out there and you can dip them in chartreuse. Uh, they do make them with chartreuse tips, but I'll tell you, you could dip them in chartreuse and, and, and uh, catch a lot of fish on them as well if you're into a lot of smallmouth and things like that. But you'll catch a lot of fish on this rig. I, I pair that up with a Johnny Morris Platinum Series spinning reel and you're good to go. I mean, this, this is all you need to go drop shot with. If you use this technique that I showed you today, you're gonna go out and you're gonna catch a lot of fish. Learn how to use your graph and have fun using it, because I'll tell you what, once you do that, there's, you're gonna be totally unstoppable on the water. Trust me. Till, till next time, we'll see you on the water. I'm Johnny Johnson. <laughs> now, see, that's what I'm talking about, folks. <laughs>